Everyone wants another bully game. Well, at least everyone that has played it. The original's wit, charm, sass, you might even say, spoke to players in a completely novel way. In fact, most of the things that the original Bully did were very different than what was considered the norm back in the day in 2006 when it launched. For instance, the game is set in a boarding school with a vast assortment of troubled kids cast in the starring roles. The kids are rude, mean, and exactly what you would expect if you attended an American middle school in the mid-2000s. The point is that these types of games are rare, games that come along and tell irreverent stories in a style that's unique and refreshing. And that's more what people loved about Bully, the fact that it felt different. But despite the cult following that it's garnered over the last few years, Rockstar has been very tight-lipped about a potential sequel. And even some large gaming publications have come out against a sequel, such as this article by The Gamer, wherein they say, quote, as certain principles change and the way we all view the world evolves, it will be interesting to see how Rockstar handles this new way of thought. These days, you have to be real careful, not only in what you say, but how you say it as well. Rockstar has had a knack for saying whatever, whenever, but that doesn't fly anymore, especially for both Bully and future GTA titles. Rockstar will have to adapt to these new worldviews or else their games may miss their audience or get construed by the public." End quote. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate that this is sort of true. Bully would have a real hard time in the media releasing in 2019 because of our evolved social dogma. A game that rewards the player for completing quests by having his crush give him kisses or having adolescent boys dress up as Schutzstaffel officers is not going to go over well with a lot of the mainstream media nowadays, nor with the hyper-progressive wing of gaming journalism. And a sequel that seeks to hold true to its roots and the subject matter could find itself in some hot water drowning in controversy. But maybe this is the secret sauce that will make Bully 2 a reality after all. Maybe this whole debate over the game's controversy could be its greatest asset. Well, buckle in, because we're about to put our marketing hats on and speculate like hell. You see, Rockstar has never been one to shy away from controversy. That was kind of the point of the original Bully and most of the Grand Theft Auto titles. They've always been accused of normalizing negative behavior in their games. It's nothing new. And at the end of the day, the only question with regards to controversy is whether or not it will apply to the customer in question. I mean, imagine something like the controversy that surrounded James Charles in the the summer of 2019. Now, I don't know about you, but I had never heard of him and didn't watch any of his content, nor did I give a crap about his makeup videos for obvious reasons. Because of this, when this scandal, if you can even call it that, came out between him and another YouTuber named Tati, all it did was raise his public presence and increase his brand's awareness beyond that of his fairly niche, albeit gigantic audience. The overwhelming majority of people watching and reading news updates on the feud were people who had never heard of him before. Sure, there was some incidental damage to like ratios and an initial sub exodus, but almost all of those sub losses were recovered within two weeks and it seems to have only rocketed him to new heights of popularity. Now, I am not recommending that you go out and seek to engage in a scandal like this, but the point is to say that seemingly negative press coverage can often be used to your advantage if you know what you're doing, specifically if the news coverage is transparently ridiculous, like in the case of the PewDiePie NAZI article from the Wall Street Journal. In the immediate aftermath, yeah, it sucks, but the truth tends to win out and cooler heads do prevail. And this is where Bully 2 comes into the picture. The debate here isn't whether or not it would be a financially lucrative move to release a sequel to this beloved franchise. I think the answer is pretty transparently evident. Rather, the question is whether or not Rockstar would hold true to the original's tone and tenor. Bully didn't pull any punches when it launched. <laughs> All right, I 
I guess that's a pun I didn't even realize. Nor did it try to water down middle school life in an elitist school at all. They put out the game that they wanted to make, and they rolled with the punches as they came. And this is another thing that bothers me about how a lot of YouTubers are handling this conversation. You see, Bully wasn't immune to criticism simply because it was released back in the ancient past of 2006. Many mainstream media outlets criticized it at the time. These articles can actually be fairly hard to find considering that they're mostly over 13 years old, but look at this one for instance that I found from The Telegraph in 2008 when the game was being released to the UK. They said, quote, a violent new video game which is set, oh, oh hold on, Telegraph is a UK publisher, I need to do the, the British accent, hold on. A new video game which is set in a school and encourages players to act out assaults on pupils and teachers has been condemned by the anti-bullying campaigners and teachers unions. The game, called Blay, features a shaven-headed pupil who torments fellow students and teachers at his school. The National Union of Teachers called for a wide ban on the game. Steve Sinault, the General Secretary, said, We're deeply concerned that the work in cutting out bullying and cyberbullying in school seems not to have made an impact on the consciousnesses of the makers of this game. The dialogue about the pernicious effects of bullying appears to have been ignored. It is an encouragement to violence and intimidation, and those things have a major impact on schools. Okay, I feel like I should apologize to everyone from the UK who's watching this right now and heard that impression, but you know what? I don't really care that much, so moving on. But you see, they were saying the exact same bullcrap back then as they are now. It's clear, controversy doesn't hurt game sales or performance because gamers don't tend to give a crap. The only time when it can is in the case of, for instance, Australia's Game Rating Board, where they tend to outright ban the sale of certain games, such as what they did recently with the new DayZ physical re-release in their stores. You're just not able to buy it. But it is clear that you can release a truly offensive, grotesque, borderline psychotic game and gamers will back your right to release it. The ultimate example would be a little game that I love dearly and even did a critique of, which will be linked down below. And this is of course, South Park The Stick of Truth. Now I don't want to go too much into detail as to what's in this game, but let's just say that it gets pretty startling. Regardless, it's in this sense that gamers are actually very libertarian. We simply don't want a very easily offended and incredibly vocal minority to dictate what games can and can't be released and played. And this is why the case of Bully 2 is so bizarre. It would sell great, it would be cherished by the gamers who would play it as long as it holds to its foundational work. And the only people who would be upset are the same people that gamers tend to relish in upsetting, and that were upset back when the original released in 2006. And yet, despite all of this, there still is concern and worry as to whether or not the game could or should be made in 2019. It's stupid. There is no question here. Yes, it should be, and actually likely is in development already. Just look at some of the recent leaks that have popped up all over the Bully 2 subreddit. I mean, the point of this video is not to go into the details of the leaks or anything. Make sure you check out the subreddits. Other people have done better coverage of it. That's not the point. The point is, it may be 2019, but we're not past commercial liberty, free speech, and the right of consumers to buy the games that they want. At least not yet. Furthermore, it's not like Bully 2 would be a game set in Auschwitz. It would be a game likely where you're playing as a high school student in a boarding school with students who treat you and everybody else badly. You know, just like it is in real life. Banning or preventing a game from pointing out how screwed up modern schools are wouldn't do anything to help improve the schools in question. If anything, you would just be removing one more escape for lonely and troubled kids who are stuck in a bad situation. Bully 2 needs to be made. And if you're one of those people who's saying that it shouldn't be made for whatever reason, fine but maybe you should look in the mirror and see who the real bully is.